How's, uh, how's immigration playing out this time? Uh, yeah, immigration is now we're when we talk about immigration, uh, let's be clear that there's two sides to this coin. Uh, the first is uh, legal immigration, and the second is illegal aliens. Um, in Nevada, the illegal alien issue is an 80 percent issue. Um, I've been very, very precise about my feelings about that. I feel that we should secure the borders. We should enforce the laws. Every state should have a sheriff like Joe Arpaio and go Arizona go. And the reason I say that is because the federal government has failed to protect our citizens. And when that happens, it is incumbent upon the states to take their Tenth Amendment rights and protect their citizens. Um, legal immigration obviously needs to have some um, tinkering done because uh, we, we, it's a long process. I was speaking to a fellow who had immigrated legally here from Scotland, and he's been in this country now five years. He's a working citizen. He has been paying his taxes. He has a family. He married and is raising children here in this country and wants to be a citizen. And every time that he goes before the um, board, he pays $400, and they say, come back in six months. That's not how the system should work. We need to make sure that legal immigrants who have come properly through the door our working citizens want to, you know, want to learn our language, want to em embrace our culture, have the opportunity to become Americans, and and that's obviously not the case right now. So we need to fix that, but um, we also need to make sure that people aren't jumping over the fence and um, costing us in incarceration, education, and medication. Those are things we don't need to be spending our money on. And the ones who are already here. They, they have uh, been able to have the advantages of being Americans because they were here, but it's time for them to go home. Now, how would you go about it? When we start to enforce the laws, they, I believe they will self-deport. We have watched that happen when Arizona began to um, enforce the laws and you know this new law in Arizona is not the first thing that they've done in uh, moving forward in this issue when they first started in Oklahoma I believe has the same law but when they first started we saw a great influx of their illegal population into Nevada so we know they self deport they're going any place that they can have a greater uh, adva advantage to those um, those services that Arizona is now refusing to provide. And so we feel that, you know, as we as Nevadans or as every state refuses to provide those kinds of uh, free uh, services, then there is, and you know, the access to jobs, those, those kinds of things, there's really no reason to be in this country if you can't get a job, if you can't access those services, it's time to go home. When, when you talk about these things, as you just did, mm -hmm. uh, own state, do you get, do you hear or, or perceive any pushback from the hotel industry in Nevada, which uh, must, uh, I imagine, employs a lot of illegal, low-level help? I, I don't know. You know, we kind of have a don't ask, don't tell policy oh. in Nevada, <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly where that's at, but um, I know that, that when you express this kind of of um, feeling about the issue, sometimes people would like to push you into that marginal corner and, and call you uh, names, but I, I want you to know that this is very personal to me. Uh, my daughter-in-law is the daughter of naturalized citizens from Mexico. I have uh, four grandsons that are a delight, and they're going to be raised bilingually because it's an advantage. The more, the more languages you know, the better. 
but they are all Americans, and and we're all proud to be Americans. And I think that that that's uh, that's why it's so personal to me.